Hi, everyone. So my name is Christina Fusco. Um, I'm the Programs and Outreach Coordinator here at Barrett. Um, so we are now reopened, which is great. Um, our hours are on fr Friday to Sunday around noon to 4 p.m. I think on Fridays we're open till 6 p.m. So if you have the time, definitely drop by, come, come in person to see the works. Hi hey everybody, thank you so much for watching our first Barrett Families Workshop. This one um, is inspired by Donna Franda's digital painting from her current exhibition, Paint, Medium as Power in a Time of Crisis, which Christina here is going to talk about in a minute. I'm Natalie, by the way, the um, Summer Programs Fellow. Um, and Christina, I'm going to flip it over to her so that she can give us a tour of the gallery rooms. So our exhibition that is on show right now is Paint, Medium is Power in a Time of Crisis. The juror is Juana Williams, and she's from the Urban Institute of Contemporary Art. Um, and that is in Grand Rapids, Michigan. So when, when she juried this exhibition, she decided to not just focus on the current crisis of the pandemic, but various crises um, that our society is dealing with today. So that includes homelessness, it includes being a person of color, it includes being part of the LGBT community, um, and also, of course, the actual pandemic and feelings of human isolation while we use social distance. So I'm gonna turn my phone around so you can see some of these pieces. And I'll talk about a few of them and also just give you a quick overview so you can see the full show. Okay, so this first piece is called Forever or F or Ever, since there are commas between the F and the R. And it is a collaborative piece by Gislaine Lan and Lando Fremox Valdez. Apologies if I butchered the name. So this piece is a collage piece that is made from pastel and watercolor, and it's been spliced apart and put together again. We see a reclining nude, and she is in a very turbulent kind of environment. And it makes me think of just the current pandemic. Some of us are stuck at home still. And just that moment of rest, but at the same time, there's all this chaos happening around you. And entering into our first gallery. The second piece I would like to talk about is this one. It is by John McCaig from Pennsylvania. He was in the US Navy and he was also a closeted queer man at the time. So he saw his peers who were also part of the LGBT community be ousted and dishonorably discharged. Um, so this piece is kind of highlighting that kind of shame and injustice, but also pain of having that happen. I remember in his artist statement, he mentioned that some of these people's lives were destroyed, just the shame of being discharged dishonorably and having to kind of explain to your friends and family why you had to come home early. Um, just the colors that are almost acidic reflects that kind of pain. And of course, the imagery in the foreground, the dagger and the and blood and the book, um, it really highlights the struggle he had in not coming out because he was so afraid, um, but then also the pain of having to hide who he was. 
The other thing about this piece is that it's done in water, uh, not watercolor, color pencils. Um, and I originally assumed it was paint because the colors are so vibrant. Here are some of the other pieces in the exhibit. And I will talk about these three pieces together since they all touch on the theme of human connection and the importance of touch. Um, this first piece is by Kathleen Aaron Lee from New York City. And I'm really drawn to just her grasp of her hand over here. And she is clearly seeking some comfort during this time and she has her cat leaning on her um, and her sheets look really comfortable, but at the same time you really get her sense of kind of isolation and loneliness just based on the negative space that's around her. And this piece is by Ivan Pazlamachev and he is from Nyack, New York. And again, just this very intimate moment and the points of contact in here, a hand to a face. Um, and his expression is one of intense comfort, but also almost a sadness. Like he, he is he's either longing for this to just continue or, or he's imagining that this is happening. I don't really know, but it, there's something about his expression that is very sad and very emotional. And then this one is by Tiffany Glenn. And she actually did an artist talk for us this past week about her work. So if you missed that, definitely check it out on Facebook. Um, and you can see the full artist talk there. And it also featured another artist in the show. Her name is Mei Feng Elizabeth. Elizabeth Chang. But this piece again is about just human connection and the importance of touch. And it is called unconditional love. And the, mo the mother is holding her child. you know, those, those intimate moments that are kind of being lost right now. Uh, so our show right now is taking up two rooms, but we actually have a lot of artworks that just weren't able to be shipped here because we weren't sure if we were even gonna be open. So this television screen is kind of going through all the artworks that were selected for this show. Um, and you can see all these works on our website. And this is kind of the end of our tour. So I'm going to hand it back to Natalie. So a little bit of background on Donna Ferranda. She's an artist in New York and she uses Photoshop and Coral Painting Painter a lot, um, which are digital programs in order to create her micro pointillist um, work, which you can see here. Um, basically, she likes to focus on concepts of femininity and telling stories through depicting women in a lot of her work. In a second, I'll share my screen to show some other paintings that she's done. Um, this one is really interesting because it combines um, some more domestic imagery like books, the bed that the woman in the painting is lying on with more natural elements like the animals and the leaves um, and mushrooms and other plants. 
um, she tends to use a more limited color palette. So in this one, you can see that there's a lot of red, green, white with some pops of blue. So we're gonna talk a bit about what micropointillism means. So pointillism, which is you know, the root of that term, is a technique of painting in which small distinct dots of color are applied in patterns to form an image. It was a revolutionary painting technique pioneered by George Seurat and Paul Signac, who we'll talk about soon. They were um, in Paris during the late, the mid 1880s when this really became um, like an art revolution. Um, it was a reaction against the prevailing movement of impressionism, which was based on the subjective responses of individual artists. Pointillism, by contrast, demanded a much more scientific approach because it involves mixing or placing unmixed colors to create different um, forms and new shades and tints without like physically mixing together paint to create new colors. Um, it was originally, there was originally a lot of resistance against pointillism because of its more scientific roots in color theory and our psychological perception of color. Um, but then after a little while, it was a really big success. Um, and you'll see people like Van Gogh utilizing it. And then micropointillism, which Donna Ferranda uses, um, uses really small dots um, placed in thin translucent layers, allowing light to penetrate through them. So you'll see like in the background on this piece at the, up at the top, I notice that there's like a, there's a base of light color. And then we have some darker red dots to like show the outline and the form of things like the monkey or the flowers that you see. And then right now I'm gonna share my screen to show, um, to talk more about the history of pointillism. Okay, so I'm just flipping over to my slideshow. Actually, I have, so I have my notes on one area. Well, I can just talk through it, I think. So these are, um, let me hit present. Okay. So these are two other examples of Donna Ferranda's paintings that she did on Coral Painter. Um, I thought these were really interesting as well. Um, I think in the last one, there was a little bit more um, like blur. It, 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 the other one had more of a blurred per, um, effect per chance to dream, the one that we were just looking at. Whereas I think this one over here um, is a lot crisper. So here we have um, an example of a George Seurat um, painting really famous one, A Sunday on La Grande um, Jeté from 1884. This is utilizing my um, pointillism. And then I have another example. This is from Paul Signac. Um, this one you can see not as many, it's, it's not as much of a dotting effect. You have more like brick sort of shaped placement of paint, um, which was, another technique that Signac used a lot um, called divisionism. And then in this one, another Signac, um, there's more dotting effects. I thought that this area right here was really interesting um, because there's a very dramatic value scale going on where um, a lot, a high concentration of darker dots are over in the left-hand corner and then they slowly fade out until um, the value reaches white. And then we're back at Donna Frandas because I wanted to talk a bit um, about mixing colors um, in order to create an effect. Um, so like I was talking about right here, you see more of like a green base. And then on top, she's layered some more peaches, reds. And then from far away, you kind of get more of a red look, but it's very atmospheric, sort of blurred, um, very romantic looking, I think. Here's a close up of that. So a lot of reds and greens, which is interesting because they're complementary colors. 
And then this was um, a study of that Seurat painting that I was just showing earlier. So you can see that in contrast to the finished product, I'll flip back a couple times. Um, there's sort of like this lighter wash first layer that I was talking about earlier with Donna Ferranda's piece. Um, and then in the, in the final product, it's a lot crisper. There's just, you can really see the layers of paint. This one um, I'd like to spend some time on is also another very famous Seurat painting um, called Circus Slideshow in English. Um, so it's again, very blurred, kind of has a much darker feel compared to the last one that we were looking at, which was very bright. And I wanted to show some details of this one. So this is, I'll flip back in a second. This is the man that we see right here, but very zoomed in. It's a really good detail. Um, you can see that there's actually in reality a lot of different colors placed down. So they're not blended together um, into, to form one paint. They're dotted throughout. So to create some darker value, we have some green and blue over in the hair. And then right at the highlight of the nose, it's a lot whiter. And you can see that closer here and then even closer in this last picture. And then I'll show you again where we just were. So over here, there's, there's a lot of colors. It sort of looks like you're looking under a microscope um, and seeing all the elements that make up something that is a lot darker, it has a lot more form. And that's all based on um, colors being placed next to each other or layered on top of each other. So I'll stop sharing my screen right now. Okay, got that. So I wanted to talk a little bit more about um, Signac's divisionist theory that I was talking about where we had the brick layers of paint um, in that painting with the tree. Um, so he was one of the main proponents of the divisionist theory and he coined the term divisionism in one of his um, books. And there was a very interesting tension between the Impressionists and the Neo-Impressionists who were using things like divisionism and pointillism because artists like Signac and Seurat were painting the same landscape as the Impressionists, but showing that um, the same motif can be interpreted very differently in a more scientific way, something that becomes less about nature and more about perception of color. So all of this history brings us to today where we can create similar effects using so many different mediums. So you can use digital meeting, mediums like Franda, um, markers, gouache, paint, all different tools to create dots. So I'm going to move my webcam in a second to do a little demo um, to show ways that you can create value scales, um, create gradients without mixing paint and to do that effect that I was showing with the Syrah piece where we have multiple colors layered on top of each other. Okay, so I'm gonna move it over so that you can hopefully see. Let's just take, okay. So this is mirrored, but at the top it says shading. So I wanted to use my black Sharpie to show how you can create a gradient, uh, more of a value scale. So I'm gonna start over at the beginning of the circle. And in order to make the really dark value area, you're going to put the dots very close together, very concentrated. Use a nice stippling motion with markers, which is a lot of fun because it's kind of what your teachers told you not to do with markers when you were little. So I'm just concentrating them pretty close together. My motions are pretty quick. You can see that, yeah. And then as I get out of the circle a bit into the center, I'm going to leave more room between all of the dots. I can go back and really concentrate the dots even more to go as dark as I want. Maybe put the dots a lot closer to the outline of my circle so that you can really form a crisper line. Real quick. And then I'll go back out and kind of make more, leave more space between the dots until you kind of get 
more of a gray effect in the middle. And up close, you can really, I mean, you can tell that I'm using just black, but then um, like I was showing in that Signac painting with the, like the pattern, the man and the patterns from far away, when you really add more and more dots, it comes across as more black than gray than white. So that was shading. And then I wanted to show some gradient blending where you use some colors um, that are similar in their shades, but different in tint. So I'm going to go from dark to light, I think. And it doesn't really matter for this um, how concentrated you want to make the dots. Just kind of depends on what you're going for. So I'm not going to make them very concentrated to just, you know, move it along. So this is my darkest purple that I have. And then I'll switch over after I put the cap on to a slightly lighter purple, my medium shade. And in order to give a nice gradient effect, you kind of overlap and layer the colors. So there's not a big difference between these two purples, but there is a slight difference, which is nice. So you overlay them, kind of intersperse them so that there's a gradual gradient effect. And then lastly, I'll take a lighter purple. Where is it? That might have been my lightest purple by accident. That's okay. You kind of, yeah. Okay, this is the lightest one. Good. So again, I'm kind of overlapping. You can see it more like this. Overlapping. And then if I went even more concentrated, this would give a really nice effect from far away. So that's gradient blending. And then I want to do some color blending like I was showing in the background of Perchance to Dream in the gallery. So I wanted to start with a lighter color like this peach, you can see it. So that was something I was interested in in that painting. So I'm just gonna go all over the circle, do some fun dots. And then I'm gonna follow it up with some red. That's kind of a similar color family. I'll just put it on top. And this from far away kind of gives a mixing effect like I was talking about earlier, where you'll probably end up seeing it more as a shade in between the peach and the red, um, but it has like a really cool blurred effect. And then if I wanted to add some darkness at all, I would try using green, which is the complementary color to red and peach. And so if I wanted to kind of make an area darker, I might pop in some green. And from far away, that would make it look like more of a shadow. So you could maybe concentrate more green and more red over here if you wanted to give it a shadow. Okay. So, yeah, so these are all unmixed colors that sort of give a mixed appearance from far away. So then I'm gonna flip my webcam back around, hopefully it doesn't fall. <laughs> okay, and then I'll go back to sharing my screen. Just tell you about a little project that I put together um, that is a fun way to practice pointillism um, with any mediums that you might have. So I have three different ideas of prompts of subject matter that you might want to try depicting. So one idea is that you can observe the view outside of your window um, and think about different sources of light and which colors you might want to or which like value scale you might want to use. Um, another is to stage a still life in your house with a couple of objects in your home. And then last is to create an imaginary landscape. Um, so you can use any type of medium like the markers that I was just using. Um, I kind of liked ones like this, if you can see it. It has more of like a dotted tip 
which is fun for um, making dots, or you can try using paint. Again, it would be, you, you wouldn't be mixing all of the shades of paint together. So it's a really different way to paint. So you might want to use something like the end of a bobby pin. You can see it, which is round, or I've seen Q-tips being used, or I have dotting tools or ends of pencils that create dots. And if you choose to do this project, we'd love it if you could share a photo of it um, by tagging us on social media. So we're at Barrett Art Center on Instagram, and then you can just look up our name on Facebook to share it with us. So I'll just stop sharing. Let's see if I had any other notes. Yeah. I think that is all that I have. Christina, did you have anything else? Okay. Well, feel free on Facebook, if you're watching it there, to leave us any comments or questions. And again, tag us in any of the projects that you choose to do, that would be great. Did you have anything, Christina? Uh, no, sorry, I like switched from my laptop back to my phone. Okay, yes. um, but that was a wonderful workshop. Thank you so much. And for whoever was able to check this out, definitely, try and share your work and give us feedback because we would love to do more series workshops like this. Um, but yeah, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Okay, thank you for coming. I'll yeah, thank you for coming. I'll stop recording and then stop live on Facebook.